Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Mad Mick Mac. Good start. <laughs> Mac Mirror's Midweek Whiskey Gig. Um, we should probably change the name actually now we're on a Thursday, like something like Thursday Throwdown or something like that, to something a little bit different. But yeah, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, and that lovely smooth intro by myself. Uh, I am, of course, Carl, Carlos. Uh, and today on with me, I've got Mickey. Hi, guys. How are we all? And then I've got Lawrence on with us as well today. Yeah, hi guys. And we've also got uh, Bryn in the background as well, who's one of our, another one of our brand ambassadors. So if you do have any questions and you're watching the long live, uh, feel free to type them down in the comments uh, and we'll endeavor to answer them best we can live on the stream. Um, if you are new here, please make sure you like this video, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got loads of content on there already, loads of different tasting settings across our different range, our seasonals, etc. Um, and we've got loads of content coming up on a weekly basis for you guys. Uh, we've got the guys coming up tomorrow night uh, with a cocktail show. Uh, we've got the breakfast show, which is going into its second edition on Saturday morning. Uh, and then we've got the uh, a meal session on Sunday afternoons as well, uh, the podcast style sessions as well. So plenty of content uh, on there to check out. Um, we do have an offer on uh, this week as well, uh, as usual. So it's uh, if you buy any of our core bottle ranges, uh, you will get 30% off your second bottle. So we're going to talk to you uh, about a few of our core range bottlings today. And if you like the sound of two of them and you're not quite sure which one you want to go for, just don't choose one. Choose both because uh, you'll get a little discount off the second one. Um, so we do have a link in the description that you can go click on uh, to follow that link uh, to buy the bottles. Or you can enter the code um, core week uh, into your uh, discount code when you get to the end on the checkout process. Uh, so you've got all the information running along the bottom down there for you okay so yeah going into our core range now we're not going to go too deep into the mac today but this one essentially is our entry into single malt swedish whiskey and it's designed for creativity um so the fellas are going to talk about this one a little bit more on tomorrow's show uh, and you're also going to hear a bit more about it on sunday's show but i just want to say this is part of our core range as well so don't forget the mac um we are going to kick off today with the brooks whiskey and lawrence is going to tell us a little bit about that one take it away mum. 100 so yeah the brooks whiskey has been one of our core products since its release in 2010 and um, this expression is a combination of four different casks um, an unpeated first fill ex bourbon cask a first fill swedish oak cask a first fill ex oloroso sherry cask and then a peated first fill ex bourbon cask um, this makes it a really, really complex, delicious whiskey, which at 41.4% ABV is just dangerously drinkable, as Mickey <laughs> likes to point out. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, on the nose, uh, I get loads of green apples, um, like really nice ripe pears, and it tapers out to a warm vanilla on the end. Uh, on the palate... You still get all of those really nice green fruits mm. and the vanilla, but this time it's combined with like an oaty flavor, a sort of um, freshly baked bread quality, and a slight herbaceous floral note at the back. Um, its finish is that is that really nice, unique, woody bitterness mm. that's so characteristic of all the McMyra whiskies, thanks to that um, Swedish oak. What do you guys think about it? You get that green fruit. You get that those green fruits coming through, don't you? It's just dead mm. fresh and crisp, straight off the offset. Uh, that's about as much as I'll do for tasting notes on that one. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's it's lovely. A good, uh, as some people say, uh, a good breakfast whiskey, a, a really good way to yeah. start your day. Yeah, breakfast session, like whatever you want to call it. It's, it's. I think for me, it's just it's a great easy drinking whiskey. I think it's one you can have two, three, four of, and not really notice it too much. Do you know what I mean? It's it's one that's. To be fair, in this weather, because I think I don't know about you boys, but it's really hot where I am today. It feels yeah, yeah. like the kind of right whiskey for for summertime. It feels it's got that really sort of just easy drinking, but still got that enough bite to it to keep me interested. Yeah. Um, and I should say as well, uh, Jim Murray, if you're familiar with uh, Jim Murray and his whiskey bible, he did give this 95.5 um, as a score on his uh, whiskey bible. So for those familiar high with Jim Murray, indeed. it's high, high praise indeed. Absolutely. Mm. But yeah, absolute banger. You can enjoy it on its own. Um, maybe a drop of ice if you want to, or a drop of water. However you want to drink it, it's absolutely fine to drink it. Um, if you want to experiment a little bit as well, that's also something you can do with it. 
uh, and Lawrence is our resident cocktail master. Uh, so he's going to talk <laughs> us through a little uh, a little cocktail serve you can you can do with the Brooks. 100%. Yeah, so the uh, the cocktail that I've thrown together for you this week um, is going to be a play on, it's going to really play on all those green floral notes that I mentioned. Um, and it's been inspired by the gin classic cocktail, the Gimlet. Um, so the cocktail came about in the 17th century as a way for British sailors to fight off scurvy um, by way of throwing back like a shot of lime juice um, mixed with a daily gin ration to make it a little bit more palatable. <coughs> Uh, for the cocktail, uh, I've made a lime oleosaccharin. Now, this is a great technique uh, that you can use in your bars or like or in your house to just try and minim minimize wastage. So once you've squeezed out all of your lime, rather than just throwing those used husks away, you can put them in like a, um, uh, what do you call it, like a sort of Tupperware container, yes. cover it in granulated sugar. And the porous mm -hmm. sugar is going to... Um, pull out all of the oils in the skin. Uh, so leave it for 48 hours covered in some cling film, come back to it. And what you're going to come back to is this really super thick, tangy um, syrup. Uh, it's going to be full of like zing and floral notes. It's great. Yeah. Um, now for the cocktail, nice little easy one. It's just 60 ml of the Brooks whiskey, 20 ml of, uh, 20 ml of that lime oleo, and then I used two drops of the Mrs. Betters green strawberry bitters what a mouthful indeed um, and then a little pinch of dill and um, now the lime is going to really complement all those green floral qualities and the dill is going to bring out that um those herbaceous notes add a slight minerality to it um and yeah just for a really simple little name just the, the brooks gimlet but yeah it's a super thirst quenching little number to have uh, and like you say these scorching summer days yes the brooks gimlet um, i like that yeah, it's good. And for everyone watching at home, obviously, I know I, I, I talk a lot and I talk quick. Uh, don't worry about trying to catch it all. The, the recipes should be in the comment section. But you can go back, pause it and, and find it all and rewatch it there once it's all up and live on YouTube. But yeah, there you go. That sounds, that really, that sounds really nice to me. That's quite interesting, mm. that, that technique to get the, the oleo. I've never heard of anything like that before. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, so, just, just, go on. Yeah, I was just gonna say, is that something that's like exclusive to limes, or can you like do that with other sort of citruses? citruses oh yeah, like literally like... every single citrus fruit possible. Yeah. You can make like people make like mixed cordials, or you can do like some people call them sherbets. But yeah, the technical term is an oleosaccharin. That's because it's using the oil of the juice oh, of the peel. Oh, yeah, cool. So yeah, which makes it an oleo. But yeah, do it with limes, lemons, grapefruits, oranges. Yes. Go wild to your heart's content. And I say, do it at home. Do it in your bar, and just waste as little as possible. Yeah, yeah, that's that sounds great. Yeah, um, yeah. Richard's just saying in the comments there. Yeah, enjoy um, enjoy this neat. But a drop to water does open up nice as well. Again, that's the beauty of whiskey. It's, it's all down to your personal preference. Um, so I, I, I say I'm a, I'm a big fan of it neat. But if you want to add a bit of water to it, that's what cool. If you want to have it over ice, that's absolutely fine. It's however you want to enjoy that. And that's something we're really keen on, sort of hammering home with Matt Mirror is that the shackles are off a little bit. You know, it's not all about sort of like you must do things in a certain way and you must be a certain type of whiskey drinker. Whiskey should be for everyone. There are no rules. you want to enjoy that. Uh, there are, yeah, there are no rules. Uh, so we are a little bit renegade. We will do a few cocktails. We will tell you to drink it in different ways. Uh, we will experiment with different casts. But that's, again, part of the fun in it. Um, so I'm going to move on now uh, into uh, the next one in our core range, and that's the Svens Eck. Are you with me, lads? Are you uh, doing a little pour? Oh, yeah. As well? So, yeah. So Svens Eck, I think as someone has mentioned in the comments as well, um, is essentially the Swedish oak one, the Swedish oak one in our core range. Um, we all use a sort of an element of Swedish oak, but this one is the one where you really want to have a focus uh, on Swedish oak. So 10% uh, of all the liquid that goes into Svens Ek has been matured for about 18 months to two years uh, in 100% Swedish oak. Um, you can see there from that image there, you've got sort of a little, nice little bit of background, a little bit of the oak trees there as well. Um, so Swedish oak, uh, and why that is different, I guess, sort of North American up to, to bourbon oak, I guess, as you uh, as you look at it, is um, because of the climate it goes up in. Because you imagine, obviously, you know, when you're in Sweden, you're getting quite north, quite high latitude. It's quite a difficult, harsh climate uh, for wood to grow. So it does grow um, very, very slowly, uh, very slowly. Um, and as a result, you kind of get less uh, less of the wood sugars uh, present. Uh, I think the technical term is xylose and lignin. Uh, the wood sugars that are most present in it and you get a lot of those wood sugars more in like uh, your north american oak for example which is why those vanilla or caramel kind of notes come through in your bourbons etc um so you got less of the less of the sweet notes more the kind of the woody the nutty the slightly spicy notes uh, come through um and 
But again, the reason why we only use 10%, um, 10 in 100 percent Swedish oak is because it's all it needs for this particular expression. It's all it needs to kind of impart itself um, on this whiskey and give it that kind of influence. Um, where do we get Swedish oak from and why do we get Swedish oak? Uh, well, I'll go a little bit into the history lesson for you. I know Mickey wouldn't let me off if I didn't do a bit of the history uh, for you. Uh, so in around 1830, um, I think it was just sort of after the Napoleonic War. I'm not great on my history, but I think that's, uh, that's pretty much the, the run of it. Um, the, the, essentially, the, the royal family in uh, Sweden um, commissioned a group of guys to go out and basically uh, find a great place to plant some oak trees because they're thinking, right, we're going to need more ships. Uh, for any upcoming wars and things like that. Um, so we're going to need a good place to grow a load of oak. Uh, and they found a little place called, now uh, this is my poor Swedish, Vysingso Island, um, which uh, if anyone's Swedish in the comments, I apologise. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's basically Vysingso. Yeah. Vysingso. <laughs> uh, so basically <laughs> on this island, they've planted 300,000 oak trees, um, which is, is mad, like a, like a lot, a lot of oak trees. Um which is great. Get the oak in there. They're going to grow nice and tall and strong, uh, and they're going to be great for shipbuilding because they're going to go really, really straight, uh, so make really good uh, shipbuilding wood. Problem was, is because the oak grows so slowly, it was about 19-something uh, when the oak was ready to be harvested and used for ships. At that point, we'd had ourselves an industrial revolution, uh, and all ships were kind of made of iron at that point. So we've got all these oak trees, uh, but there's no point using them for ships because we don't use them to make ships uh, with anymore. So... Uh, never fear, the oak hasn't been wasted. It's great for flooring, great for furniture. Uh, you may know there's a small uh, Swedish brand that uses that makes furniture. <laughs> um, and also, uh, obviously, great for whiskey casks as well. You don't get a lot of knots in it. Again, because it grows straight uh, and not having a lot of knots, having good clean wood is great for making casks off. Uh, so that's, again, another reason why it's great for casking and why we wanted to demonstrate it uh, as part of a very Swedish uh, ingredient uh, into Matt Mirror. So... Enough of the yapping, into the tasting. So on the nose, straight away, again, fruity citrus. Notes you're going to see uh, all through kind of a lot of Matt Mirrored range. You get pear, apple in there. Slight oakiness and toasted bread kind of comes and intrigues you at the back end of the nose. Get it on your palate. Straight away, spicy, sandalwood, nutty, woody. You got a little bit of fruitiness coming through, maybe some fresh dried ginger, um, maybe a touch of cereal notes coming through as well, um, and then it sort of develops and develops into a little bit more of that kind of sweetness. Uh, in terms of finish, um, quite balanced, I would say, balanced with dark chocolate, uh, quite simply. For me personally, um, I find it a little drying at first on the finish, and then I find that dark chocolate kind of evolves. Um, the more you kind of live with it, the more you kind of go back for your second and third sip. That kind of rich dark chocolate kind of comes through a little bit more for me at the end. Um, what do you think, Mickey? White pepper, mm. massive, just white pepper, which is good. I really, I really quite like that. It, it makes your mouth feel quite alive. Uh, so yeah, so that 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 Swedish oak influence uh, yeah. gives you that white pepper, uh, and you really get it in it. And even for you know for quite a while after, it just sits there in your mouth. Uh, that feeling, mm. uh, it's like slight spice in the dancing yeah. hand. Yeah. yeah. Lawrence, how about you, mate? What's your what's your thoughts on the uh... Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely delicious. Like I say, it's just um it smells like a, a lemon drizzle cake to me. It's that that, yes. that candied citrus peel. It's it's beautiful. And like oh. you said, that, that combination of the, the oatiness. And uh yeah, no, you're definitely right with the, the peppery spice. I get like quite more of a um a sort of green pepper, like slightly more aromatic. Um but yeah, it's it's beautiful. And then yeah, that, that really nice toffee finish it's yeah it's great yeah i say white pepper because i quite like white pepper i've not really had many green uh like the, the, those aromatic uh peppers that you speak mm. of lawrence so i i can't relate it to that so obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. whiskey tasting notes are, uh, mm. are relatable to, to stuff that you know of you know yeah for yeah sure. which is why all of my things are cake so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah again yeah that's the thing you'll get you'll get individual notes and like it will evoke memories of like different unique things to you um but i think there's there's clearly a sort of a through line there of like you do get elements of that wood spice that nuttiness mm -hmm. that it's different to something like the brooks for example you know you get more of those kind of yeah. spice notes kind of pronounced through so if you do like um you know if you do like any other whiskies that that do have quite a sort of a woody or quite a nutty quality or a dark chocolate slightly spicy quality 
Uh, definitely say Svens Eck is one to really kind of give a go uh, and try. I think it's one that's really popular at the trade shows as well. You know, when you're just sort of going through the range with different people. Yeah. Svens Eck's one that kind of intrigues people because of the Swedish Oak side of things, but also um, once they try it as well, um, and especially where it sits in terms of the price point, you know, it's, it's something that's really interesting and grabs the attention. Um, before I sort of go on any further, I should say as well, in terms of uh, ABV, it's a little bit stronger than the Brook, so it comes in at 46.1. Uh, the majority of stuff across the map mirror range is around the 46.1 mark. So that's our essentially our magic number. Uh, and in terms of casking, um, you've got ex bourbon, uh, you've got a little bit of Oloroso in there, and as mentioned, you've got the Swedish oak as well. So if you just have to a little bit more detail in terms of casking, that's the kind of uh, composition uh, that goes in towards it. Um, so before we move on, uh, I believe you've got a little serve for us as well. Uh, Lawrence, you want to take us through uh, your yeah. serve? Uh, yes, yeah, so for this one, it's like a little um, julep smash sort of combo marriage. Um, it's just a really, again, super easy little summary thing. Yeah. Uh, it's just 60 mil of the Eck, uh, 10 mil of a, a simple sugar syrup, and then like six to eight Thai basil leaves. Um, and, and that's it. Just throw it all in a julep tin, uh, a metal mug, or uh, if all else fails, just like a rock glass. Um, add your crushed ice. Give it like a really, really good churn. Make sure all of those flavors are, are incorporated and you get that necessary dilution. And then again, just garnish it with um with a little pinch of a, a little basil type. Of, there you go. There's a photo of it. So yeah, that's the that's the traditional serve in the tin. And I think we've got another photo in a glass coming through. There you go. So you can see all those leaves floating around in the crushed ice, just looking nice and pretty. Yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, the reason I specifically chose Thai basil mm. is um it's got a really unique taste to it. Like it's very different to to, to regular basil. Um, it's it's super super aromatic. Um, it's got a peppery spice to it uh, and a slight almost like mentholy quality. And this is just going to complement all of those those tasting notes that we picked out of the whiskey. Um, and yeah, that's just number two of your perfect summer cocktails for you nice. today. Nice. Sounds like a bagger. Sounds like an absolute. Bagger, yeah. Fair. I need. I think I need it again on a day like today. Like I'm just thinking. I'm, I'm in cocktail mode. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one, and obviously everyone else will see why in a second. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was the Spence Eck in a nutshell. And again, to reiterate, um, if you do like the sound of any of these whiskeys tonight, 30% off if you buy a second bottle of the core range. So if you like one, you like the sound of, and there's another one you think, I want to experiment with that one, I want to see what that one's like. Uh, it'll soften the blow a little bit for you. Uh, we'll take 30% off that one. Um, so you've got the link in the description uh, if you want to go straight uh, straight to, uh, to the site and get that. Or if you're banging the code Core Week uh, into your uh, into your browser when you get to the final stage of the checkout, and you'll get that 30% off. Um, so on to the Svens Rook. Um, take it away, Mickey. Yeah, let them know. Nice. So this this, this one's quite a, a quite a few people's favourite is the mm. Svens Rook. Uh, so Svens Rook is Swedish smoke. Uh, you'll tell that as soon as you pour it. Yeah, it's not quite yeah. that. It's not quite got that oiler hit of peak but you can tell as soon as you pour it yeah. you, you know you've got yourself a smoky whiskey so this recipe was conceived along with elegant back in 2001 but we didn't actually launch rook uh, until um until 2013. uh it's bought at 46.1 percent and this is one of our only ones in our core uh, already one in our core range it comes in a 50 cl bottle mm. because it's done in small batches um so mcmere is one of the few distilleries in the world which malts its own smoky barley uh, both molten and smoking take place in a facility situated next to the distillery using a Swedish grown barley, uh, peat cut from the nearby Karin Mossen, uh, which is the Karin Bog. Uh, and to add a further Swedish dimension to the smoky flavour, uh, the glowing peat, uh, the peat fire, uh, is layered in with fresh juniper, which we get. Um, get from the local power company when they go around and do their maintenance and, and yeah. cut bushes back and stuff like that uh, they give the the juniper twigs to us which we lay over our fire uh, so all about uh, the environment uh, and, and no wastage <clears throat> excuse me yeah so, i'll just uh, quickly so, interject there yeah. as well we show a little image flash up as well um just you know that's the original smoker we had yeah, the, yeah. the, the test uh, smoker yeah yeah, we've we've upgraded since then <laughs> <laughs> to a shipping container yeah to a shipping container yeah uh, so the smoking process uh, in that shipping container takes over 36 hours. Uh, the smoldering peat and juniper slowly release their flavours and infuse uh, and infuse that bed of malt. Uh, every four hours, the stove is refilled with fresh peat and juniper twigs. Uh, the process of malting and smoking barley takes around 12 days, all in all. 
uh, and requires constant maintenance and supervision. So the fire, so you know, we don't want that fire to go out or anything like that. Uh, when the smoking is completed, the concentration of phenols, so whiskey geeks, you like this yeah. one, uh, is 60 ppm. Okay, 60 ppm. But we don't use 100% uh, smoked uh, barley. Uh, so we only use 23% in our smoked recipe. Mm. We do do a stronger one for private casks, but we'll cover that in another show. Uh, so yeah, so 23% uh, of smoked barley uh, mixed in with our elegant uh, unsmoked barley. How do we do the smoking? So the first thing we do uh, is fill large IBCs with barley. Uh, the type of barley we use at Macmillan is called tipple. I like I like saying that word. Tipple, <laughs> tipple for tipple. And then next we uh, we, we wash uh, and rinse the barley uh, to get rid of all, all, all the dust and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, and this is known as steeping the barley. Uh, and then for the barley to start germinating, and it must be soaked and reach a moisture content of around fifty percent. Uh, so that's that's quite heavy with, with with water there. The process takes around two days, and the water needs to be changed three times during those during that time. Uh, the barley also needs to rest in air sometimes, otherwise it is drowned and attains the wrong moisture content. Uh, every time the water is changed, the barley needs to be stirred uh, with compressed air to ensure an even and optimum moisture content. Okay, so we, we use uh, compressed air to, for, to get the stirring going in the IBC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we empty the steeping tubs uh, onto the molten floor. Uh, so molten takes two to four days, depending on the moisture, uh, depending on the moisture content and the temperature, uh, uh, and an assessment of whether the barley has been fully malted uh, is gradually made. So we, mm. we check on it every so often to see where it gets to that level we want it. The heat generated uh, during the molting process itself, which is why the barley needs to be turned with a malt shovel about three times a day to stop those, uh, to stop it intertwining and becoming like a yeah. mat. Uh, the longer the barley is able to germinate and make the cell more softer, the easier it is for the, for the peat smoke to, to permeate through, uh, through the, the, the barley. Uh, during the actual molting process, the enzymes or the sugars uh, necessary for molting are also performed. Once the barley has fully germinated, uh, the green malt is shoveled onto a conveyor belt that leads into our smoking chamber, which is the shipping container that we spoke about just now, uh, which is right next to the distillery. Yeah, After yeah. this, the green malt germinates at approximately 20, uh, 20 centimetres thick, layer on the floor for around five days. Uh, during this period, the barley is turned by hand to avoid the sprouts getting tangled up in each other. So, when the green malt is put in the actual smoker, it's important to spread it out uh, into an even layer, so you don't get like hot spots essentially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, and, and yeah, so you don't get over penetration of, of the smoker that in one particular yeah. area in that as well. It's now time to fill the wood fire underneath the peat, uh, and it's kept going for thirty-six hours. The thicker the smoke, the better. Really gets that flavour yeah. in there. Yeah, so the the smoke malt does not dry completely during smoking. Uh, so we finish the process by drying it with hot air. Uh, it is then dried down to the 10 to 15 percent moisture content that the barley had when it was delivered. Uh, after this process is complete, the smoke malt can be used for at least one year. So we fill up our, our, our big silo at the back of the mm. distillery. Uh, you see the distillery pictures, you'll see that the, the silo is at the back. That's what we call our unpeated and peated barley. So the casking that goes into this. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we use American oak and Swedish oak, which are ex bourbon. Uh, and casks also saturated with oloroso. And we only use small casks for the batching as well. Uh, anywhere between 30 to 128 litre casks uh, we use. So now onto the good bit. This is where we get to, <laughs> to grips on that. It, it all adds, it's all building suspense. Like the more it information does. you got, the more you, you see like what gets into the process, the more you kind of build the anticipation for it. So straight off, Fourth straight play. off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it is yeah, whiskey foreplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whiskey yeah. foreplay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> nice one, I love Richard. that. You have to replay the video back slowly, mate, because I might have spoken a bit too fast. <laughs> so on the nose, guys, straight off the bat, you get that smoke, but it's not overpowering. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like Steve A. Lord just said there, it's, yeah. it's not overpowering. It's there. It's nice. It's subtle. You get spicy aromas of peat, juniper, vanilla, caramel. Citrus again, uh, pears and raisins. So the, the, the raisin stuff's going to come through from that Oloroso influence. Mm. Uh, you get spicy oak notes of toasted bread and anise. So on the taste. Mm. 
so it's not as smoky uh, on the palate as as it is uh, on the nose. Uh, but you definitely get that peat and the juniper coming through for sure. Mm. Yeah. So you get the, the dry uh, and oakier oaky aromas found with uh, with light tobacco, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, tobacco leaves and herbs. Uh, a slight saltiness with minerals in these and green fruits. I do. I just just on the finish. I definitely get that saltiness coming through. Mm. And for me, I really enjoy that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that that subtle smoke, that that sort of like a maritime sort of flavour. Yeah, yeah. It's not quite. Quality. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I really get that. So it's slightly dry and smoky with notes, notes of oak, and I really do get that saltiness coming through. Lawrence, what do you reckon to that one, my friend? Yeah, it's yeah, it's delicious. Um, I, I've literally just noticed it this very second, but like it's it's. I've just checked the temperature on my phone. It's twenty one degrees here in Leeds, and like, it's so drinkable in this like insane yeah. summer heat. Yeah, like, yeah. Not obviously, I'm not going to shame any other brands, but yeah, there's definitely like multiple other he- like peated whiskies that there's a zero percent chance you'd be able to drink this comfortably in this sort of temperature. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, yeah I was just, just I was I was shocked myself with how good it was like coming into it right now. Yeah. It's it's, it's um, just light and subtle. It's it's not mm. it's not a bit punch in the face with the peat. So this is probably for, for people that are wanting to get into peated whiskey that are a bit yeah. scared to go down the either heavily peated route or straight off the bat because that can be quite intimidating. Yeah, I think yeah. the uh, the Sven Goodich is a good introduction card. What do you reckon? Mm. Yeah, no, I was going to say off that box. So I think one of the things you mentioned was you know the original the original source um uh the phenol parts per million you know you said 60 um yeah, and fine. for anyone sort of into into like smoky whiskey uh, as a sort of core range whiskey that's actually quite a high number mm-hmm. um but i think the key thing is to remember that you know we, when we create the blend in the in-house it's it's mixing with that elegant liquid as well and i think that takes off a lot shot takes off a lot of the sharp edges as it were yes. you still get enough smoke and sort of earthy peatiness in there to kind of intrigue you as a smoky whiskey drinker but it's something that's a little bit, it's, it's still quite balanced. It's still quite delicate. And I think it was interesting that Lawrence said the first time that I've noticed it, you know, it's because it's, again, different climate, different times of day. Mm-hmm. You know, it will all affect your different experiences. But it's one that even us, having drank the whiskey, you know, several times, obviously through doing this and whatnot, you kind of have a different experience um, yes. with it. And you can find little things that kind of surprise you with it as well. So, yeah, definitely. In terms of smoky whiskey, <laughs> yeah, one for me that's just a yeah. great go-to. Definitely. Absolutely. So, obviously, Lawrence mentioned the, the temperature out there. Uh, uh, we've done two beautiful summer cocktails already. Mm. So, uh, I think we should uh, cocktail along with Lawrence. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, 100%. So, you're joining me this week, aren't you? This yes, we're going gonna to have a bash. Um, yes, I think. <laughs> this is, yeah, we're, we're going to try. Um, yeah, this is going to be this is gonna be fun. See how it goes. Um, but, yeah, so, like, Mickey, you pointed out there that this has got a, a really sort of... Um, Maritime was the word that you used, sort of flavour. Yeah. So I get, I get, I get all that saline as well. Um, but it's like, yeah, all those really beautiful green flavours combined with the saline and the the, the the juniper almost gives me a sort of um, uh, seaweed-like taste, like specifically like a almost like nori. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, so they're the sort of flavours we're going to be trying to play with today. Um, so the cocktail that I'm, uh, I'm, we're going for has been inspired by um, a super obscure, uh, I guess you'd call it a modern classic cocktail. Um, it comes from a 1950s book, which has been loosely based on the real life, um, on, on a real life CIA agent who ran the agency's West Berlin operations. Uh, the main character, William King Harvey, he'd, um, when he was making his martinis, He'd rinse his ice in his tin with um, a peated scotch before before oh, making nice. the drink, nice. um, and this caught on with bartenders in the fifties, and they started ref- like making it themselves and referring to it as the Berlin Station Chief. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make our own little version of that here. So have you got your tins and everything else ready? Uh, yeah. yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more, 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 more. I need to go home cocktails. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. how it works. Um, so we're gonna be going for thirty-five mils of the rock here. Don't have my yeah. jigger to hand, so I'm just going to guess, and I'm going to go jigger. You just re pour it. Eyeballing. You're professional by now, Carl. It's fine. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm constantly professional. Um, and then we're going to go for 15 mil of a dry vermouth. Now, both Mickey and I didn't manage to find any dry vermouth, so we've both got Lily. So for everyone out there that's going to call us out on it, yes, we know it's we know it's not technically a vermouth. It's a fortified wine, but um, it will it will do right now. 
in a but pinch. I like, and Lille, I like Lille Blanc anyway. I'm a, I'm a massive, it's fan, delicious. I'm a massive Vespa fan. I'm going to use that as <laughs> yeah. a host of the country Americano. Thank, thank yeah, you for no, yeah, home, home poor Carl <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, name, we're, then, we're then going for um, <laughs> 15 mil, so the same as the Lille of the Creator Gin. Bang that in on top of that. Um, five mil of our pickled onion brine. Now this was the intriguing one for me. Like a really intriguing yeah. ingredient. Um, yeah. Yeah. So like when I drink martinis, or like if I drink a dirty martini or a Gibson, like I have them filthy. Um, like there's there's dirty, and then there's how I drink them. I, I love that umami quality uh when i'm when i'm drinking a drink so yeah this i always add a little bit like a lot of people would be like oh no just put a couple of olives in it but i always add an extra little uh a little tipple we'll call it yeah. of the brine because yeah i say it's just it's just what, what i absolutely just, love I've just, I've just spilled the bloody brine all over the table good yeah i feel like Sticky i'm a bit aggressive on the that's order gonna, that's gonna be smelly nice. but we'll see oh, that'd be nice we'll um, and then we're going for two drops of the Mrs. Better's Oak and Smoke bitters. Um, now, the reason I'm using these bitters is that they've been made out of um, tobacco leaf, lavender, leather, um, oak, and cedar. Um, so the woman who makes them, she when, when I, I did a training session for ages ago, she said that they're meant to taste like the smell you get of walking into a really old Spanish tapas bar. Oh, so, nice. Like, like yeah, so like thirty years of cigarettes, like stale beer, really <laughs> yeah. old sofas, like the Serrano ham hanging up, um, yeah, yeah. and yes, this is going to really bring together those um, the, the like maritime notes that we all picked up, the the really green notes, and then the herbaceous gin is just going to make it all pull together beautifully. Um, these are a bit of a niche product, so I know you guys don't. Have them. I know you, uh, Ricky, uh, Mickey. You've got some of the oh, Creole bitters. Yeah, from the yeah. Yeah. Pack, yeah. In a in a pinch, any any super uh, super woody bitters will will suffice. Uh, what have you got there? Are you using to me? Uh, let's just uh, yeah, let's assume that I've used the right bitters. Uh, 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 bitter <laughs> this um, is my experimental mix. So yeah, we'll just give this a nice little stir. Yes, please. Try not to over dilute it. Like it. And then yes, drain it uh, into and, our and onions and whiskey. Secret best friends. <laughs> oh yeah. And then it just garnish it with another onion. So I always say a drink that is served with a snack is the best kind of drink. Oh, we got it. And uh, there you are. So yeah, this is this is this little number, and um, I'm going to be calling it the the Swedish Station Chief. Nice. So um, I hope everyone enjoys it. I can only find my margarita glass. Hey. <laughs> oh yeah, big boy. Hey. Yeah, and I've I've, I've uh, washed out and reused my mirror glass. So apologise if uh, anything oh, cocktail aficionados. But that is <laughs> belting. What do you think that? that? Is belting. Yeah. So yeah, so I was worried that the onion might sort of overpower, um, but I think really it just gives it a little really? nudge, doesn't it? It just gives it a exactly, little, like, a yeah. little dim dimension. Yeah, a lot of people are, are scared to use. Like, I mean, I know brine's not exactly the, uh, the the sexiest of ingredients to be pouring into a drink, mm. but yeah, like you say, it just it just bolsters all of those flavours, which is like yeah. you're already putting an onion or an olive in a drink. You mm. want those flavours. Just, just give them that little extra bit of oomph. Um, and yeah, you're, you're having a great old time. And I think we've got like a lot of, um, you know, there's, there's very much a lot, you see a lot of sort of sweet cocktails, you know, different sweet iterations of cocktails. I think, well, we've still got a bit of sweetness in there. It's something that gives it a different kind of different flavor dimension um, to go down that route. Like say, I've the brine in there, like something very different. Um, yeah. And yeah, a drink that's served with a snack. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just see, see when you mentioned what uh, the 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 lady that does the bitters uh, about about the uh, thanks Shane um, about the smell. Shane said he misses those smells as well for, for, from the old bars. I yeah 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 I can for get sure hundred percent hundred percent yeah like like walking into a, like you know, I guess the equivalent is like a really old pub that you're getting out like. Mm. Walk yeah. in, and you just smell. I say the car has been there for. <laughs> yeah. years, you know what I mean, you sit down and you can just smell the generations of drinkers that have been there before you. That's what these smell like. Yeah. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, since since like the, the the smoking ban took effect a good few years ago, I mean, like every single pub for about oh. three years just smelled of new carpet and paint. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah. That's true. You lose a lot of that history. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah, that's a banging cocktail, Lawrence. Again, never fail to disappoint us with the with the different sort of mixes. And I think I've enjoyed sort of trying to hash together. Uh, <laughs> Your cocktail, yeah. so we'll definitely have to try this again in future. Uh, I will purchase myself a proper cocktail making kit, um, for future ones, but yeah, I think so. We've done a little journey through three of our core range products today. Um, again, uh, I must stress that the Mac is going to be talked about a little bit, uh, with the guys on tomorrow night, so make sure you check them out. Uh, I think they're on the same time as us, aren't they? Six o'clock tomorrow, Six o'clock um, tomorrow yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're going to experiment with the Mac, and we're obviously doing a little bit on the Mac on the Sunday. Um, but hopefully you've got an idea for some of the core range whiskey and the different flavour profiles that are going to jump out. Um, if there are a couple that sort of jump out to you, uh, remember we've got the discount running as well this week. So use the code Core Week uh, to get 30% off your second core range bottle. So you buy one, 30% off the second one. There's a link in the description as well if you want to just click it through that way. Um, but yeah, if there's two you like the sound of, um, don't pick between one or the other. Just get them both. Uh, and experiment with them. Uh, in terms of, in terms of, yeah, the price point, the flavor profile you get, fantastic. I can see Brin, uh, so Steve saying in the comments, he's gone back to the Brooks whiskey is a, a very fruity and five a day type whiskey. Yeah, that's again one of the great things about the Brooks whiskey. There's not a bad time of the day to be drinking that. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining us today for another midweek whiskey gig. Um, and I'm going to enjoy some cocktails. Skull, definitely. Skull, see you later, guys. <laughs> a bit. <laughs>